Yo, what's going on, y'all? I want to thank you if you're tuning in. I'm your host, Paco, and you're listening to Occupy the Media. Got my guest, uh, Mark Russell, on the line. You still with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm here, Paco. I'm not right. going anywhere. That's good. That's good. <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right, so let's jump back. You were talking about one of the rules, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All we were talking about was um, there was just there was brief. So now that so now that the all the delegates and the the credentialing was done, we could get business done quick. Uh, the next order is um, the next order of business is we had a debate on on the quorum on on whether it is in order or not for anyone to call for quorum. And what that means is that quorum is the minimum number of people required to conduct business. So what that so it could be really detrimental. It could be real bad if um, a bunch of people, aka let's say Ron Paul people, were trying to put through some business, and then all the Romney people just stood up and left. And let's say that since they all stood up and left, that kills quorum, meaning now there's not the minimum people required on the floor to do business. Well, that could be really bad. So let's wow. say they all get up and left. And then someone notices and they go and they bring a motion to the chair to call for quorum and they count everyone up and they go, hey, we don't have quorum anymore, can't do business. We'll recess till tomorrow or next year. And that is what happened in 2008. And so, what, so, the, rules, so the rules that were adopted were it is out of order to call for quorum um, until the business of the day has been done. So there was a lot of belly aching over that. All the Romney people, of course, opposed that, saying, well, we have families to get to, we have jobs to get to. And then our well, argument then on the come? other side. Exactly. And that was, our argument. that was our argument on the other side. There was, so there was 10 minutes of debate on that, which was the uh, amount of time allowed for debate. And then we held the vote, and, and it ruled in our favor. I'm pretty sure we won. Essentially, every single rules change that we wanted, we wanted to do. Um, so by this time, it's probably about 2 p.m., um, and then we held the vote for the national committee man and national committee woman. And what that means is every single state in the country is allowed one committee man and committee woman, um, to, and, and those two people are then elected, basically you're elected to the board of the Republican National Committee, the RNC. So the RNC really is made up of elected people from each state, uh, represented from that state. So then we, of course, um, and then what's also interesting to note is that the Republican uh, committee man, committee woman from each state is um, automatically seated as a as a delegate on the um, on the on the. Um, sorry, Buck, I just got distracted here. Is immediately seated as a delegate in the next convention. So we held the vote um, for James Smack and Diana Orock, who are both um, Ron Paul supporters. And so in 2016, immediately it's guaranteed that there are at least two individuals who are liberty-minded and constitutional, you know, constitutionalists, limited government, will be at the RNC convention next year. When, James when, Mack Ron, Paul is, uh, when Ron Paul is ready for his second term? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You hear me. You hear me. So we held those votes. Unfortunately, that vote was ran. Um, it was not planned very well. The um, the original intention of the woman who was running the elections, uh, Jennifer Terhune, she wanted all the ballots to just be put in everyone's folder uh, so that we all just had our ballots. But she got overruled by someone. Um, so anyway, we had to come up to the podium to get our ballots and they were, the ballots were handed out. They didn't print enough ballots. They had to print more ballots. <laughs> um, it was a, it was a mess. Let me ask you this real and quick. So, let me just, let me just ask you this real quick. Did you yeah. notice or did you see any Republican folks, you know, may, probably older folks, but Republican people that started realizing that, dang, the, the establishment is really fishy. There's something going on. People that ain't Ron Paul people, you know, Regular uh, Republicans that uh, just go along with the media telling them. Did you happen to see anyone maybe like change their mind or start to start to pull over to you guys' side after after seeing the shenanigans that, that they were pulling? You know, it is tough to tell. I don't. I I don't know. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, <laughs> I I hope so. Let's just put it that way. But I didn't hear from anyone who was like, 
you know, what they did made me so angry that I'm now voting for Ron Paul yeah. um, delegates. But who knows? That could have happened. Um, uh, what probably persuaded the most amount of people was the uh, speech that Ron Paul gave. And yeah. actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he gave that speech right after we convened for lunch. And uh, and it was great. And people, I mean, they, 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 it was well over... It was uh, it was eighty percent or more of the room were on their feet cheering after he gave his uh, speech and um, and so that was that was awesome and there's of course video on that online and and yeah. so we all did that we held a uh, go ahead I was just gonna say uh, I want to make sure I'm not jumping too far ahead of you though but I remember before I forget that there was a lot of people on the chat on the live stream asking about. Why are why are we uh, unbinding our delegates now? I don't know. I might be jumping ahead of you. I just want to make sure we get to that. So I, I yeah, I yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get yeah yeah we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So so the day so the day wrapped up. Um, we eventually got all our ballots to vote for the delegates, and so everyone voted according to slate. We all got in line and did that. And um, so it's pretty late in the night now. Um, the decision was made from the chair to work through dinner, which is what we did. And so now it's probably around 9.30 p.m. or 10 p.m. Um, the voting for delegates is already, is already finished, and now there is activity happening on the floor. And it was really exciting. You could tell there was a lot of energy in the air because the word that was going around was, okay, the um, unbinding is going to happen. And it looked like that momentum was building in that direction. Uh, a motion was made um, to allow the committee man and committee woman to be seated now and not in four years, which would have given us an additional two delegates. That, unfortunately, was against RNC rules, so the attorney, one of the attorneys from the RNC, had informed us as to what the rules were there, so that lost. Um, and then there was, and so now we're talking about the bylaws, and it's in the bylaws where you would have to make this change. So the bylaws committee report is going on, and so um, something got – we got held up. Uh, Mike Weber made a motion that we did not want – made an amendment that we did not want passed. And you have to forgive me because my, uh, my memory is a little fried at this point, but I forget what it was. But a division was called for, and the division – when the division called for, it was a counting division. So everyone stand up and tellers have to go in and actually count. And by the time that got done with, Ron Paul won that, so the amendment was not made, um, was not was not made, um, which was good. But by that time, everyone was so worn out, and it was very clear we won that vote by only 60 people, which was not a supermajority, which is required to amend the bylaws. And so if we wanted to unbind at that time, we couldn't do it anyway. So immediately Richard Bunch called for adjournment. And it was carried. Or I guess maybe um, maybe I guess recess until tomorrow morning. And that motion was carried. So you're saying and we so, didn't have you're saying we didn't have enough uh, manpower yeah, to be able he, to to be able to unbind our delegates. There was definitely not enough manpower to unbind the delegates. Um, in my in my view, um, there was not enough. The numbers show it. I mean, I forget what the vote was, but it wasn't a two thirds majority vote. So, um, so we didn't have the manpower Saturday night at whatever it was, 10.30 p.m., to do the unbinding. And I'm pretty sure they were angling to get that done. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm not an insider. That's just my guess. I, I have no clue. Um, yeah, do you, was that, is there a possibility that some were all – is there a reason why we didn't? I thought we had the majority. Or I thought we would be able to get that from the well, look we, of it. We do. Yeah, we do. Um, but you got to keep in mind, people – People leave. People don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's not as like I mean, there's a ton of people there. One of my friends that I went up with, I, yeah. we flew on the same plane up together. He didn't even know what unbinding was, you know, or why oh, it's important. Okay. okay. So when you got, I mean, you got to, you know, you got 1,200 people in there, and not That's everyone tough. knows 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 all the stuff. And then so the next morning was when we were really expecting it to happen. Okay. Like, well, we let's thought, talk. Let, okay. Let's talk about next morning when we come back. We're heading to our next break. You're listening to Occupy the Media. I'm your host, Paco, with Mark Russell on the line. We'll be back. Wait. 